It's really hard because this is like a new generation and in a lot of ways, a lot of things have changed. Yeah, it's like, you know, obviously I'm kind of in the middle between, you know, being Sikh and, and growing up in America. It is hard. It's been, it's been difficult to be a Sikh in America, yeah, sure. Uh, dating, I never actually, I, my father still doesn't know that I have a girlfriend, but my mother knows and my grandma knows. We moved uh, with uh, $80, me and my younger brothers and my parents. I was always thinking we need to buy a business. We don't, we don't need to work for somebody else. So I think it's very important not to give up who you are, rather add on more values. Learn more cultural things in America, learn the work ethics, learn the system, learn the music, but you don't have to give up what you brought with you. Sikhs began to arrive in the U.S. over a century ago. Most worked the fields. California's dry agricultural heartland has much in common with their homeland in the Punjab, in northern India, on the border of Pakistan. The word Sikh, sometimes pronounced Sikh, means student. The last wave of Sikhs came in the 1980s. Now there's just under a million in the U.S. Sikhs doing well in the U.S. is the rule rather than the exception. They have one of the highest rates of college graduation among immigrant groups. Even uneducated Sikhs that arrive here penniless and unable to speak English often end up with their own businesses in about five to ten years. But I have seen many Sikh families have done very well because they integrate into American values. They accepted the local language. They have learned the local system. But at the same time, they kept some of their traditions which they brought with them. Most start by doing manual labor. My name is Kulwant Singh Jol in uh, Lebanon, Yuba City. Back in India, in Punjab, most Sikhs are, are farmers. They love the land, they love farming. And wherever they go, they will try to buy some land and start farming. My name is Paul and uh, our family is uh, originally from India. My family first came here, uh, the first job was in the farms, picking peaches, you know, pruning. I believe we made around uh, $30, uh, all four of us, me, my brother and my parents, yeah. You can save forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000. I don't think it's hard to save over four or five years and start your own business. You save money, you try to invest it as soon as you can. So you start some kind of business. This farm, we um, bought it in pieces, uh, bought 90 acres first, and then 
bought another 400 and bought another 90 acres and slowly it's about 800 acres now. Hey, I'm Balwinder Singh and I'm from Punjab, India. I own a gas station here in Marysville with the Seamart and car wash. How are you doing? Hard work is the key. I had two jobs. Minimum, you know, you live off one job and you save the other one. And it took me eight years to save about $65,000. We have uh, three subways in Davis and then we have a couple in uh, Lincoln and one in Wheatland. In 2005, you know, we, we bought uh, Econolaz in Yuba City. We're not uh, a millionaire people, but we do own small businesses and uh, it's, it's better than working for somebody else. The philosophy of the constitution of this country is very much in tune to the philosophy uh, of the secular. The equality of human beings and in God we trust. The three tenets of Sikh religion are uh, to work hard, sincerely, and to worship. and also to give in charity. Guru Nanak is the first Sikh Guru. He is called the founder of Sikhism. And he was born in 1469. And Sikhism means actually learning. It's always learning for higher knowledge. Sikhs treat their holy book known as the Guru Granth Sahib like a living being, keeping the flies off it by day and putting it to bed at night. We have to show our utmost respect to Guru Granth Sahib Ji. You know, it is the word in the book that we are supposed to consider as our Guru. Sikhism does not believe that they are the superior ones. They respect every other religion because every other human being who believes in different religions come from the same God as the Sikhs have come from. So that is one reason that Sikhs don't believe in, in conversion. And we are supposed to respect every other religion and every other human beings are equal. The reason they are equal is because there is only one God and everybody has come from that one God. Langar is the free kitchen or the free food. It has become the integral part of Sikh philosophy and Sikh way of religion and Sikh way of life. And everybody, irrespective of color, caste or race, they are invited to the Langar. People can come and eat the free food. And it is also symbolizes that it is the equality of human beings. Everybody has to sit together on the floor and then eat. While anybody can be baptized as a Sikh, few are able to make the commitment. Devout Sikhs refrain from smoking, drinking, or eating meat. There are five unique identifying traits of a baptized Sikh. These are referred to as the five Ks. The most conspicuous of these is that they wear a turban, which covers their uncut hair. Guru Nanak said how you will become pure with the God you'll have to have these five Ks after he baptized the Sikhs. The five Ks are, the first is the Kesh. Kesh means the hair on the body, any part of the body, beard, head. And the second K is the Kanga. It's the wooden comb that we keep in the hair. Third case is the Kara, which is the iron bracelet we wear in our right uh, arm. The fourth is uh, the kashara, which is called the underwear. This is a specially stitched underwear uh, with these openings on the leg. It has to come almost to the knee. And this stitching, it, it will not take you higher because this will cover the body entirely. And the fifth K is the kirpan, which is a small sword that we have to carry with us all the time. Guru Hargobin Sahib. He is the one who started the concept of Miri and Piri. That means a soldier and as well as a saint. 
वन इज़ हाउ टू यू लिव योर लाइफ इन द वर्ल्ड एंड द सेकेंड इज हाउ टू बी ए हाउ टू लिव योर लाइफ इन ट्यून विद गॉड बट टू बी अ सेंट यू हैव टू प्रोटेक्ट योर सेंटलीनेस एंड टू प्रोटेक्ट योर सेंटलीनेस यू हैव टू बी अ सोल्जर Kabaddi is a it's a mixture of tag and rugby in a way where um, each team sends over a player to the other side and they have 30 seconds or 28 seconds to tag and come back and one of the opponents whoever they tag has that much time to do whatever they can to prevent them from coming back to the line. My uncle actually used to play kabaddi and so you know I used to go and watch a few of the tournaments and he was he should come try it. Participating in it really keeps me close to my culture. He grew up and you were asked a lot of different questions because people weren't really familiar with and I looked really different because I had a turban. When I actually cut my hair, it felt like it's almost sad to say but it kind of opened me up a little bit. Whereas this the way people reacted to me and it's just it it made me a lot less shy. Huh. My name is Jas Karan Joel and I'm from Yuba City, California. A lot of people might not have that knowledge to know why they need to keep their hair so they they don't really care too much for it. What I start off in the morning is I wake up and I comb my hair and then I tie it up in a bun called a juda. In front of the mirror, I adjust it. And wrap it around my head. And at the end, I use a a pin to uh tuck in my hair from the back like a metal rod. It's called a baj. I actually don't tie my um turban traditionally like one one should like the actual bigger version of it it's called with a nook like pointy from the front i tie it around the reason i haven't cut my hair and i continue to have my hair is because i feel proud it makes me proud because i know that our gurus made a religion of sikhism and they set guidelines and i know that i'm following them the best i can and i i'm representing my religion I keep my hair because I like the history, like the Sikh history. It's really proud history and I just they're just so brave and I really like how it symbolizes, you know, those brave people and also just it's a distinctive of the Sikh religion. First we have to put this and then throw a rope and then do this then it can be finished. I don't like where because it is hurting this all thing. When I was sitting it hurts. My turban gets hot and my disc gets hot. Why? Because when I go out sun and there's hot right there and I go on and then it gets hot in in here. Many six children are understandably unaware of their roots. So their parents have in good old American tradition started Sikh summer camps to help preserve their culture. Here at Pollock Pines in California, Sikhs take a weekend retreat to learn their equivalent of Sunday school. This is a Sikh youth camp which um takes ranges from 5 to like 18, 19 year old. Basically, we just teach them like just the basics about Sikhism. and we expand and we have fun activities we have games and it's just it's a lot of fun for the kids I love going to these sick camps I think these kids are in really good shape because their parents are really involved and they're very active and they're they're doing all the things that they're supposed to do It's the kids that don't go to these camps that we're worried about like how do we reach out to them You know, how do we get them into our community? That's the struggle that we're facing today. It's very important to integrate into American society. I think there are certain assimilation which happens gradually. When it is forced on any group, 
those groups lose their self identity, they lose their pride, and actually they become a burden on American society. Sikhs embrace the American dream, but they do not give up their cultural identity. Even many second and third generation Sikhs maintain strong cultural Punjabi or Indian traditions. Nowhere is this more evident than in the practice of arranged marriage. But it has other consequences. Dating, for example, can be fraught with difficulty. We're not really allowed to date. It's it's a hard. It's really hard because this is like a new generation, and in a lot of ways, like we, a lot of things have changed. It's just it's hard to explain to our parents because it's like kind of traditional, you know. And I mean, their way is not bad, you know. Their way is totally sound, like the way that they believe. It's just it's different here, you know. My father owns a trucking company. I was in high school and my dad would look at me like, okay, who is that coming to pick you up? Oh, it's my friend. He's like, okay, you better not think about marrying her. You know how we are. We'll kick you out of the house, you know, because that's what happened to his brother. You know, when he married out of the race, they kicked him out of the house and said, hey, you're on your own. Can I cut trailer right there? My father still doesn't know that I have a girlfriend. He doesn't want anybody else to come and say, hey, your son was with so-and-so's daughter, you know, at a restaurant or, you know, out somewhere, you know. It's more of, you know, somebody else coming to tell him, you know, and being shameful. Everything that I have is because of my parents. I went to college. They paid for my whole college tuition. I have a brand new Mustang. So you have all those things going to your mind. What if he says, get out? or leave, you know, so where am I going to go, you know, to Kyle's house? He'll probably charge me rent. I don't even have a job. Well, a lot of the first generation, too, you know, the first generation beliefs and stuff, you, dating is not something you should be wasting your time on anyways. You know, it should be school and studying, and, uh -huh. you know, that's pretty much it. Whether it's a guy or a girl, you know, you shouldn't be out fooling around, as a lot of the first tradition would put it. We got married about six weeks ago. We actually met at a bar. He calls it a lounge. I call it a bar. I don't know you want to say lounge. <laughs> I would call it a whirlwind romance, actually. <laughs> and I do find that a lot of like family members that are more traditional really respect the fact that we have a love marriage, but we were very traditional about it. It's like a, you know, after the month that we were together, we decided, you know, this is it, and we're going to make it public and official. So a lot of them do respect it, but I don't think it was really expected. In our culture, it's extremely serious, like coming together with the families, and you don't really smile and make expressions. Typically, you're just kind of more sad, if anything. While the Sikh religion opposes the caste system, Sikhs, like most Indians, have a difficult time leaving it completely behind. Every single job in India, it was divided into a caste system. You're just born into it. If you were a jut, you were a farmer. And it still goes on today, you know. And my parents, they feel like I'd rather marry outside the race than marry somebody below my caste. In the Sikh religion, you're not actually supposed to acknowledge the caste. We're not from the same caste. But, um, yeah, technically you're not supposed to acknowledge it. Ah, McQueen is nice. The new generation doesn't care. But the older generation, they still, they still care about that, yeah. And in which I'm pretty sure, you know, I mean, another 10, 15 years, it's not going to be an issue at all. Yeah, with the way things are, the way things are going, it's not going to be a problem. But yeah, the old generation, they still care. But people still talk. And people will always talk. People will talk. I mean, it's a community. People need something to talk about. Despite Western misgivings, many Sikhs claim that arranged marriages can be every bit as successful as so-called love marriages. Arranged marriage back in the day in India was totally different. It's getting more modern over here now. What it was then is you wouldn't even see the bride or groom until the day of the wedding, so it was like totally arranged. But now it's more of like the same thing as like MySpace or like Match.com. Like it's more of like the parents finding somebody that might be acceptable. Historically, there were arranged marriages and you didn't really know who your husband was when you met him. You just trust your family so much that you get married and then you can see who your husband is. 
parents have a vested interest in the marriage process because in many cases, they will end up living with their children. It's traditional for the daughter to go and live with the groom's family. So when you're marrying, you're not, I'm not just marrying this person, you're marrying the whole family. You will be coming, especially for a girl, it's very important to you know the family background I'll be living in. And we do live in extended family and I respect that. So it's very important how are you accepted in that family. I think love, it just grows after you get married more and more like for him, I have more love and compassion for him. And when you get married, it's just a commitment. In an Indian tradition, then there's, there's abundance of love. When I met her, there was something I said, this love is going to last forever. Mom, are you going to make the party? Yeah, I'm going to move back. No, I think I got it. Amrupeet is very, she has very strong personality and uh, She's very mature. My parents want him to be sick. They're leaning way towards having a sick boy. Because, like, it's not really, like, no against, like, the other religions or other, like, races. It's more like you're, you're going to be put into a family where, I mean, everything's different. So it's going to be so much harder, like, adapting. Like, you're so used to certain ways of doing things. And um, just then what would happen with, like, the children and everything? Like, what would they believe? It would be our goal that if they can marry in the you know, Sikh families, uh, then it's passed on the traditions to the future. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're going to do that to me. We, I think we have faith in our kids. They'll make we'll find the, best, <laughs> guess, the best of the season. <laughs> we shall see. Traditionally, Sikhs have kept a low profile in the United States. But since 9-11, the community has been the target of hate crimes. I think uh, after 9-11, yeah, although it was a, such a tragedy which hurt all of us, but I think it hurt Sikhs in two ways. You know, obviously as Americans, our country was attacked, and then we were misunderstood for something we have nothing to do with. So the, the people they were watching on television with turbans have nothing in common with us. So that, but unfortunately, 99% of the turban-wearing Americans are Sikhs. They are not Taliban, they are not terrorists. You turn on the TV, you know, and you see Osama bin Laden, you don't think there's a difference between Osama bin Laden and a Sikh. He has a turban, Sikhs have a turban. He has a beard, Sikhs have beards, right? But it's a recognition of what is he doing, you know? Nobody else is more American than me. I'm in the military, I've been in the military for seven years. I was born here. You know, and just because you're white Caucasian doesn't make you more American than me. Now the community is reaching out to their fellow Americans in an effort to educate people about their culture and heritage. People from all over the U.S. come to Yuba City, California to watch and participate in the Nagar Kirtan, known as the Sikh Parade, the largest gathering of Sikh Americans in the country. We actually walk, it's in front of my house and from the temple, and we walk down, we go down the streets and we just hold our flags and our different floats of the temples and music and it's really big. Some of the Punjabi traditions goes back to five, six thousand years. You know, they have survived over those centuries and millenniums. They're not going to disappear in one or two generations. And I think the kids will make their own choices. I'm very optimistic. 
I'm not fearful. I know my kids are not exactly going to be like me. That's okay with me. But I'm pretty sure they're going to preserve some of the traditions. Sure, they're Americans. They're born here. They're going to speak English. They're going to fo follow certain American traditions. And the culture is a dynamic process. So I feel, being a Sikh in America, I feel myself as proud. And that's what I teach uh, and let other younger people to know that, you know, that if you have a faith in your religion and you stick to those principles and, um, and you wear the kakars and you follow the teachings of the gurus, you know, you will be respected and you will feel proud of being a Sikh here in America or anywhere else for that matter in the world. To order a DVD copy of this program, call 888-814-3923 or visit kvie.org slash viewfinder.